Right, so let me record this. Uh, default settings, it's fine. And once it is finished, we will have animation on our wasp, and that's great. Now we have a base animation layer. I'm going to lock that because I'm, just going to, I'm going to start modifying the keys in this bake layer now. So if we look in the uh, graph editor and ignore the sirens on the outside, we can go to select hierarchy. I just want to get all the keyframes. So here we can see what just got recorded. And we can already see that there's a, you can see where it starts repeating. So you can already see the, uh, the loop that we're going to be cycling in here. So we know that a prog if we look at the peak of this uh, blue one, for example, we know that at this position here and the next peak, they're going to be quite similar, right? So these two are very similar. We're going to use these two as our looping point. And we're going to try and smooth out the tra transition even further. So if I just find these two points, it's going to be 82. And just put this one at 82. And the next one at... 113, so something like that. We can get rid of our solver for now and only look at our animation. There we go, so now we have a, it's, <laughs> well, yeah, so there's not much work left to do. I was expecting more of a difference, uh, but let's just go through the steps in case your simulation ends up looking a bit more different. This is quite a, a lucky, a lucky loop, <laughs> if you will. Uh, maybe let's find a, a worse, place to loop it. Let's loop it more in the beginning. I just want to get a greater dis uh, difference between the two so I can showcase how to smooth the uh, the difference out. Yeah, so it's quite <laughs> it's quite a good cycle all the way maybe towards the end. This one and that one. Um, okay, well, <laughs> all right, well, let's pretend that the, uh, the simulation did a worse job and that the difference is uh, worse than than what we're seeing here. So uh, the way I would smooth this out even further is I would first of all just delete everything we don't need. So that will be all of the keyframes on this side, all of the keyframes on that side. And this is the reason I locked the base layer because now we're not actually deleting the base keyframes. They are still here. So we can still go back to our original animation if we wanted to. So something like that. And we know that the, the point at which the animation loops is going to be right at the edge here. Uh, so I want to smooth that out, but I can't smooth it out because there's nothing to smooth out into. So we need to get the, the beginning to line up with the end and then smooth it out. So I'm going to copy all of these keys and just paste them. So now we have two copies of the same loop. And we know that right here is the transition the, from, these, from, the, from the end to the start. Uh, we want to smooth it out. So I'm going to just move that transition somewhere into the middle of my animation. Right, so now, that we, so now we have the, uh, the, now we know for sure that the start and the end are exactly identical. Is it one frame too many? Right, okay, one frame too many. So we know that this frame and the last frame are now identical because we copied it so that the, the keyframes are identical so there's, there's, there's no um, discrepancy between the start and the end, and that's what we want. Uh, we probably even want one less so that the, the last frame becomes the, uh, you know, the frame before the start so that we get a perfect loop. Uh, but now we have our, our transition is happening somewhere in the middle, so it's probably here, I think. If we look at the animation, it's like, that looks like a slight cut. And if we zoom in, we can see uh, well, it's not as easy as I wanted it to be because if the simulation was more different at the start at the end, we would see a visual difference in these uh, in these curves. Uh, but we know it's here because it's we still see a slight shift in the body. Uh, so the way I would solve that is just well, we could start by if I would if I were to, to if I were to delete these keys, uh, then we would rely on my uh, sort of keyframe interpolation to smooth it out. Uh, but as you see in the viewport, now the interpolation isn't actually working that great. You know, because uh, it looks like there's a gimbal lock happening, right? And he's transitioning from probably like positive uh, 180 to negative 980 or something like that. So that doesn't necessarily work uh, right off the gate. The first thing we need to do is actually reinterpolate the rotations. See so if I have everything selected, 
and, and I only show the rotation channels. You know, you can already see that these green ones, for example, here's one that jumps from a value of 290 degrees to a value of negative 107 on one frame. You know, so that's, that's no good. Uh, so the way, you would, the way you would solve that is just to uh, show the rotation channels, select all of them, and then there's this chain, uh, you, know, you can't see that. In the curves panel, you have the uh, change rotation interpolation. Uh, there are a few ways of doing it. Uh, there are actually two ways of doing it in the record dialog box already. Uh, the default is set to Euler, which, uh, which in my experience, I have found it to be the most uh, stable or the, the one that's least likely to break your rotations. Quaternion produces the, the best results, but sometimes it can ruin the rotations. So that's why this is the default. Uh, but personally, I always use Quaternion. It's very rare that this actually breaks anything. Uh, so, so if I were you, I, if, if I was you, I would use Quaternion as well. Just be aware that if if you record and the rotations are all messed up, uh, either switch back to Euler or off, just for absolute safety. Uh, because Quaternion is something that you can do after the fact. So that's what we're going to do now, and that's the, and that's this uh, rotation interpolation. If you have all of the rotation channels selected, and then you go to Slurp, and then back to Euler. So now you might think that nothing happened, but actually. It converted it to quaternions first, uh, which sort of smoothed out the rotations. Uh, and then we're going back to Euler, so we get these nice uh, curves again. And you can already see in the channel, uh, in the graph editor, that everything is, uh, you know, the way you would expect it if you were to hand animate it. No sort of flipping from negative to positive. And so now we can do what we just did. So if we look at the, I think here is the, the uh, transition. If I just go to these keyframes and take three, maybe four keys, and just remove those. So now we let Maya do a smooth interpolation of those keyframes. And at this point, we have a perfect um, smooth cycle of a very uh, <laughs> a handicap B. Let's say it's a handicap. That's what it is. It's a struggling, it's a first timer. He's never done this before.